Well, didn't you say we have that biodome that blocks all the nukes? No, we don't have it. I want to make it. We don't have it. That's what that's what they were. They're hoping, and I'm not sure we can make it. I think maybe mm. we can because because the Tic Tacs have it. We have some evidence, anecdotal. The Tic Tacs have this thing. They have a force field. Yeah, they they could they could bounce. They, they try, try to shoot it down with missiles and it bounces off. They try to shoot the, they, they try to shoot the Tic Tac with missiles. Or, or, or the or the, or the, or the, or the, or the stuff coming out of the water. Yeah, they tried to shoot it down. What? Yeah. Who tried to shoot it? Well, I can't tell you that the guys who told me, you know, the, the guy would get in trouble. I don't want to get him in trouble. And what happened to the, the what were they shot rockets at it? Yeah. What they happened shot, to the rockets? They, they bounced back or they nothing happens. They can't get through it. Well, they even have the thing when they have the CUFO and they take a settle in torches and they try to, they can't, they can't dent it even. Mm. Until, they can dent it when it wants, until mentally, if if it likes your brain waves, it'll obey your commands. Really? Yeah. That's the that's people the, can consciously tap seen, into them. What? People can consciously tap into them. That's the only way you can. It's the when they're controlled, because they're conscious. They're alive in a sense. They're artificial life. They're uh, they are post quantum artificial uh, living uh, conscious intelligence. They are chat AI. Oh, they are. What's happening? What what my what Sarfati Corp is going to do if we're successful? If we get you know, we may not. We may not be. They may. What Sarfati Corp is going to do? You're going to have an iPhone, in which the AI is a conscious AI. It's going to be as conscious as you are. Maybe maybe not quite as conscious. Maybe like a dog is. You know, dogs are conscious. Yeah. But but it'll be able to talk. A dog can't talk. Mm. A dog has emotional consciousness just like us. Maybe better than us. You know, mm. the dolphins they all have it. You know, it's all the same. right. Because I know we understand the physics of it. We, we solve the physics of it. We understand mm. how to do it. You know, with nanotechnology. That's what we're going to do here. And it's our fatty space corp. Um, and so the point. And you can get into your Tesla car. I don't like electric cars. That's bullshit. I want to. I'm going to get into my e e pace Jaguar, my 2030 e pace Jaguar, and it's going to have a conscious say. You know, it'll say, uh, Jack, where do you want to go? In a beautiful English lady's voice, like they have now. But except that it's going to be much smarter than this, you know, than what they have now, because what they have now is is a zombie. It's right. not conscious. Right. Okay? Right. But they're also going to have con. But we also have to worry because you have conscious <clears throat> robots. It's going to be like Blade Runner. You can't tell the difference. Between you can have deep fake people. Mm. You know, and there could be some problems there, but you know, the science fiction, you know, Blade Runner and all that stuff. What are your thoughts on what Michu Kaku says about the multiverse? Where he says uh, there's multi- I, I'm open minded to it. I know me, I've met Michu Kaku. We discussed fly he's into flying sources. Mm, yes. You know, yes. Much. And he's a visionary he's a smart guy. And very um, good communicator. A great communicator, yes. And whatever Michu says, you take seriously. He's, uh, as they say in the KGB, the Michio Kaku is a serious person. Mm. And some drink some vodka. I drink vodka with Michio Kaku. <laughs> He's a serious person. <laughs> so, yeah, have you ever talked to him? What, what, what is your... Yeah, I, 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 had a, I was at a bar with him in Santa Fe, and we spent about like an hour drinking. He was telling me about the... The, uh, this is a, this is when I got into the fight, almost got into the fight with Steve Greer. Steve Michio was there. Oh wow! And after and somewhere in Santa Fe, this hotel in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and he was we were sitting down at the bar, <clears throat> you know, drinking, you know, uh, and uh, and he said he's investigated the JAL, you know, he's he's a Japanese American, and so he was interested in the JAL thing, and he said everything is real. He investigated it's, it's real. It happened, as far as he's concerned. What is the JAL? That's the, the the close encounter of this uh, Japan air uh, you know airline with this flying saucer. I don't know. The, I forgot the details. But back uh, you know twenty years ago this was. So oh really? Years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just look up the just uh, just you know Google uh, Michio Kaku J A L U F O flying saucer. Right. And and so so he he you know, he's he's not even skeptical about it anymore. Yeah, I've heard him talk about this, uh, and I've heard him mention um, like the concept of avatars. Yes, well, I mean, there's a movie avatar. Well, that's what I'm there's, talking about. Right. Yeah. See, that's the other thing. Ah, see the big thing. I should have it because all these Silicon Valley young billionaire, your generation assholes, you know, they got billions. Of, yeah, they bought. Oh, Sam Altman's one of them. Oh, yeah. Right next to him. So they want to live forever. 
They're going to live forever. Sarfati Space Corporation has a chance of showing them how to live forever. <clears throat> because the CIA, George Koopman, 1975, says, Jack, we want to know how consciousness works. So that's called the hard problem. Tom Soppett wrote a play called The Hard Problem about this. Problem. David Chalmers, a scientific American, a philosopher, they all pussyfoot around. Now, I solved the hard problem back even 20 years ago. It was one of the first. I first, okay, see, I said two problems. How do consciousness work and how do UFOs fly? I basically solved the hard problem back in the mid-1990s. You know, people are stupid. They don't get it. Finally, Two years, a year last year, a year ago, uh, there's this guy, Pavo Pilkin, who's now, he's a respectable uh, cognitive, sci- it's kind of biophysics guy, philosopher, of, uh, kind of, you know, he's, he gets grants from the Fetzer Foundation, you know, he's part of the in crowd, the kind of, with Stephen Hammeroff and all this, yeah, you know, he's, he's a mensch, he's a serious person according to the establishment, okay? okay. And he is a Finnish guy, he's a professor in Helsinki, and in Sweden, okay? And he published a paper in December of 22 on the brain as a quantum measuring device. And section seven of that paper in a very respectable peer-reviewed journal is the Sarfati theory of the mind-matter consciousness interaction. And he basically says, it's the only, th- I am the only theory in town that explains it. Nobody even else comes close. I explain using Bohmian physics, you know, that it's all in there, mm. okay? And just like these guys at law, oh, so, okay. And then it took me only, at 2011, basically 2011, I basically solved the UFO warp drive low energy problem, and I gave a talk. I was working with these guys, Creon Levitt, Larry Lemke, who works with, uh, with you know, now with Jacques Vallée and uh, Gary Nolan. And uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, General Pete Worden, who's the head of, uh, of NASA Ames back then in 2010, 2011, he had retired from the... He was a, he's, he's an Air Force general, brigadier general, who ran the Space Command. <coughs> he has a PhD in astrophysics from the University of Arizona. So he's a smart guy. Okay? And then he took... A, and my uh, a kind of informal... This guy, Creon Levitt, who's now the research director of Planet Corp. They do these... Satellites for the CIA, small, you know, they do like SpaceX. Uh, mm-hmm. What, no, Sky, what, are, what does Elon Musk have? That Sky thing, all these little satellites. They do stuff like that. Planet- you mean the internet? Yeah, oh, the, you know, the, the space surveillance, all these small satellites. Space surveillance? Yeah. What? Starlink, Starlink, Starlink is the internet. Yeah, they do like that. The planet, it's called planet, they're here, right here. It's planet Corp. It's a <clears> spin off <throat> of NASA Ames, the guys I, I, I knew. <laughs> and they've done this. In any case, Back in 2010, 2011, there's a big meeting with DARPA, Defense Advanced Projects Agency, yep. NASA, and what they're called the 100-Year Starship, and General Pete Warren pays my, invites me to Orlando. This is October 2011, and I sort of solved the problem by then. I give my basic paper, but I'm trying to explain to you guys. It wasn't as good as I have it now. I have it, you know, things get better with the time. But I give the first form of it. Eric Davis' age tries to... Put me down. Even though he believes in it, <coughs> I guess he was afraid that it was, you know, too fringe. Mm-hmm. What was fringe about it? Who knows? You got to ask Eric Davis. Go interview him. <coughs> what, do you, what do you think he thought was fringe? <coughs> I think because he was after the money and he knew he, you know, I think the, uh, Ron Pandolfi calls them crooks and loons. I don't know. But the thing is this. Sharon Weinberger was there. Sharon Weinberger is a defense journalist. She writes, you know, and she wrote an article about what happened, this whole thing, about <coughs> me at this meeting and what happened. You can read the article, Creon Levin's in it, and she writes about the whole thing. It's on the BBC website, British Broadcasting Corporation. So everything, everything I'm saying can be checked. So I solved the problem then, back then. <coughs> and basically the last 10 years, I've been improving it, you know, but I've been getting all this opposition from the Eric Davis, Chris Mellon, Louis Elizondo, uh, Colonel Alexander crowd, mainly because of uh, that they hate Donald. They have Trump derangement syndrome. So because of that, they have Sarfati derangement syndrome because I was supportive of Donald Trump. That seems to be it. Or they're trying to keep the real secret secret because they don't want anybody to know, but it's too late. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs>